Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me in the locker room today, Wednesday, February 2nd, 2022. I'm Alan Locker. I was a fan of this talented woman long before we became friends. And I believe you all would agree that she needs no introduction. Please welcome to the locker room four-time Emmy Award winner, Kim Zimmer, and my friend. Happy birthday! Hey, Kim. Can you hear us? I don't know if anybody can see me. Yes, we can. I'm going to log off and log back on. Oh, okay. Kim's having internet trouble out in California, everybody. Thank you all so much for being here. Can you hear me? Kim's having trouble, everybody. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, everyone who has made a donation so far to St. Jude. Let's see how much money we can raise for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital in Kim's honor today. Um, I know everybody's excited to, to see her. I hope uh, we can get her here and uh, chatting with us. Yes, she's out in California. She's visiting her son, Jake and uh, she's with AC, and here she is. Let's try again. You're muted. There Hi. you are. Hi. I, 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 they said everybody could see and hear me. <laughs> yeah. We didn't hear you. We didn't hear you. If you, oh, if you okay. were cursing, and I, we and I couldn't see the video. Okay. Well, you, which is probably well, a good thing because I'm not crying and smearing <laughs> my makeup. So there's a lot of great pictures in there. Oh, over the shoot. Year. Well, I'll uh, replay it. Yeah, and I'll actually email it to you. Happy birthday, my dear. Thank you. How is your birthday going so far? So far, so good. Woke up, woke up. We went out to a little uh, uh, par three golf course that's 10 minutes. I'm, I'm visiting Jake and Vera in uh, Los Angeles right now. So um, we, played, we played nine holes of golf this morning. So that was a nice way to start. And then we went and had a little breakfast. Oh. Hear me? Yep. There we are. I can. Hello? I can hear you. Hello? I oh, can. Dang it. Hold on. I can hear you. Can you see me now? I can. Hello? Yes. Shoot. Oh. I wonder if she has her iPad. Oh, she's back. Let's. Oh boy. Come on, Kim. Hi, everybody. Hi, James. Hi, Nisi. Hi, Freeman. Kat, Roseanne, Wendy, Susan, Renata, Jane, Daniel, Daniel Boone. I have a friend named Daniel Boone as well. David Lyons. Oh, come on, Kim. I don't know what is happening. Um, I apologize, folks. Let's see if we can get her. Sorry about these technical problems. Let's hope she can get this working. Hi, Luther. Hi, Tony. Hi, Johnny. Hey, Jeff. <laughs> I love that. Uh, Yes, technical difficulties happen in the age of the internet and not being live in a studio, like, you know, having the luxury of 200 tech people helping us out, makeup people, lighting people, sound people, all of that, all of the above. Hi, sunshine. Cheers, everybody. Thanks, Allison. Hi, Katrina. Stay tuned. I'm sure she's trying. 
And I'm sure she's sweating, as I would be. Oh, I'm jealous of the... Uh, hi, Wendy. Hey, Dwight. I'm jealous of... Uh, somebody just said they're having... Goody Goody said they're having... A, eating a slice of birthday cake. Or maybe she is. <laughs> um, I don't know that she has a computer at West. And Jake probably does. But I don't know if Jake was home. So stay tuned, everybody. Hopefully. Hi, Sabra. Keep the face. I'll keep the faith. I'll just keep talking. Do you have a favorite personal story? Uh, Jane just asked me. Oh, let's see. I think we might. Oh. Let's try again. Ah! <laughs> I am so sorry. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Yeah. Do you have your iPad with you? I'm on my. I'm on my iPad now. Okay, that might work better because your phone might just have too much interference. So, right. so you were. You were starting to say you got up, had breakfast, played a little golf. Played a little golf. And now, and then we have dinner plans for later. Nice, nice. Um, again, thank you for being here. And thanks to the fans for helping us to raise money for St. Jude. Um, yes. Since we are raising money for St. Jude, you and AC, your husband of almost 41 years, have three amazing kids, Rachel, Max, and Jake. What has motherhood meant to you over the years? Oh, golly. It's, I, I, I think it's the most fulfilling thing that um, I could have ever hoped for in my life. You know, you're, we felt so fortunate to have our firstborn, Rachel. Um, we didn't plan any of our, just kind of, <laughs> they just kind of happened. And um, those were the best surprises in the world. Uh, Rachel came first, of course, and that was a blessing in and of itself. And then surprise, along came Max, and then surprise, along came Jake, and and then surprise, surprise, three grand bar, and we're waiting on more in June. So yeah, Vincent Reed and Sophie, who goes by Fifi like my mother did, um, and you have a fourth yeah. on the way. Fourth on the way, a little girl. We're very excited. Oh, so we've got two girls and two boys. Sorry, I'm trying to find an angle that I that I my neck isn't rolling and my fingers aren't in the. <laughs> <laughs> so this is about it. This is as good as it gets, folks. <laughs> okay. Uh, Dora just said, "My husband and I will be 41 in June. Happy early anniversary!" Oh, oh another yeah, same. Yeah. We're August uh, 29th. Uh, awesome. What have the last few years been like having those three grandchildren for you? The three grandchildren? Oh, well, you know, it was it was wonderful and tough during COVID, obviously. Vincent was, uh, I guess, a year old when COVID struck. And um, and I used to I used to have to go over and, and talk to him between a glass door at their house. Um, my daughter was working in a COVID unit at the hospital and didn't want me to, you know, be exposed to anything. And so I would go over and um, and take naps with him between a with a glass. Door. I'd bring my pillow. He'd get his pillow down off the couch and we'd lay down at the glass door and take a little nap together. I mean, it was wonderful and awful all at the same time. But the other wonderful thing was that we we discovered a great um, life outside. Once we were able to be together again, and but be dis, you know socially distant, and we would have meals outside together, you know, all of us together, and and that was great fun. So, you I know, bet. but it's it's a little better and i'm i'm hoping that you know we we get we get through this and to the other side sooner than later absolutely uh, is life just blissful now life is blissful but also hectic because you know you we try to we try to share our time <laughs> between between you know the two households with the grandchildren now and and then once this third one comes then we're really going to be uh stretched thin because we're kind of hands-on grandparents so we kind of insist on uh doing as much as we can for for everyone <laughs> so uh, it, it's a little it, it, it's a little crazy but crazy wonderful let's put it that way it must be something to watch your kids raise kids 
It's it's fantastic. And they're all such wonderful, wonderful parents. I got the cutest little um, happy birthday song from Sophie, Max's little girl, Sophie, this morning. Um, she sang happy birthday. Yeah, yeah. And it was so cute. And I'm getting um, birthday flowers from my son, Jake, right now. Hello. Oh, <laughs> oh hey, Jakey. <laughs> Oh, look at that. <laughs> That's my handsome son, Jake. Now I've got beautiful flowers here. Um, I so, love it. Yeah, and, and, and I'm sure I'm going to get a birthday video from Vincent. He's in school all day today, so as soon as he's out, I'm sure. Right, Rachel? I'm going to get a birthday song. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. Uh, you you and my hubby are both Aquariuses. What were, what were your birthdays like as a kid for you? You know, I was just, I'm, Rachel had gotten me this thing called Story Worth, which is every, every, once a week on Mondays, you get a new question and it's a way to document your, your life for your grandchildren or your children. And once you fill everything up throughout the course of a year, then you send it back and they make it into a book. And that, that question came up about birthdays. And to tell you the truth, I, yeah, I guess one of the birthdays was, how did you celebrate your 21st birthday? And I was like, it was the same as my 18th, because in Michigan, the drinking age was 18. So <laughs> I got to have my first cocktail on the eight, uh, when I turned 18. So my 18th birthday was really my 21st birthday. <laughs> so birthdays that. were were great, were great fun, but, you know, it was... Um, I mean, I remember earlier birthdays than later birthdays because you got to celebrate it in school and that was always fun. You know, right. being able to take cupcakes or whatever to school and it was your day. And so that was fun. I love that. Jill Laurie said to tell you, you look great. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Even though I'm having, I'm trying to find a way to stretch my neck. <laughs> Thanks, Jill. Um, I heard you say that you were entertaining at your parents' parties basically since the age of five. Yes. Do you remember what, what that entailed? Well, I, I remember that I was a little ham bone. You know, I just, um, it, they would always say, okay, time, you know, you, you've said your hellos. Cause I loved all of my, my mom and dad's friends. They were, they were so much fun to hang out with. And, um, and then my mom would say, or my dad, um, time for you to go to bed now. And I, so I would sing one final song, whatever it was, you know, whatever I usually asked what people wanted to hear. And I'd sing a song and it would have about 20 verses. <laughs> <laughs> and, and dad would finally start clapping and say, okay, good. Thank you. Good night. Love you. <laughs> so that was fun. Are, the, 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 my audience was always very appreciative. Are you seeing any of that in Vincent Reed or Fifi? Vincent is definitely, um, I mean, we were talking about Vincent this morning coming back from breakfast and, and Max said, uh, Jake said, I think Vincent's destined to be a, a comedian of some sort. Um, you know, so he, cause he, he likes to make everything funny. I mean, it's an age that he's going through, but, um, and, and Fifi is, uh, I mean, Sophie, excuse me, she is just, she's just such a little, she's a tomboy, but yet she's such a little lady and she like whispers. And so, you know, she'll be a Shakespearean actress probably. <laughs> and Reed, Reed's too young to really, Reed just is watching life go by. I mean, he is, he watches every move his brother makes, you know, uh -huh. he, he stalks him, you know, he doesn't like it when he can't see Vincent. Oh, that's really nice. Cool. Are they almost like two years apart or more? They're almost, they're, they're almost three years apart. Three years apart. Wow. Wow. Um, yeah. Talk about the director who handed you your first script when you were 13. Do you remember what show it was for? Um, oh, I think it, you mean like what I talk about my very first, my very first. Uh, yeah. Getting that script. I did. Um, I was doing, uh, uh, what was I doing? The Sound of Music. And I was uh, uh, the one who puts the 
frogs in the governess's bed, uh, Louisa. I played Louisa. I didn't really have, a, a, I don't think we really had script at that age. I think mm. they just said, okay, now this is, um, this is for you to, uh, uh, I'm getting a message from my daughter right now saying that Brian, my son-in-law, Rachel's husband, did indeed send me a birthday song this morning that I have, I have not seen yet. So I apologize to whoever is watching who's keeping me on track. And I apologize for not having seen that video yet. <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic. I they love keep that. tabs on me. <laughs> yeah. Hey, they, they want to know what grandma's up to for oh, sure. Br Brian, my son-in-law said it's because it was 3.30 a.m. your time. Oh. So I uh, haven't seen it yet. Oh, I can't wait. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, I mean, I, you know, they, they just kind of said this, he, he, this is where you will say this. And because it wasn't a huge part, but, um. But it was fun. But, but it hooked you in enough, you know. It hooked you. Yes, right? I think the bigger, the bigger um, uh, instant reaction that I got was when I uh, had had an audition. All I want, I just wanted to be a singer and a dancer, and a director who ended up being my college professor because I ended up going to his college. Uh, the director was a uh, funny thing happened on the way to the forum in the John Ball Park Zoo. Um, <laughs> They had a theater there, an outdoor kind of amphitheater, and we did. I auditioned to be a dancer, a courtesan. And um, funny thing happened on the way to the forum, and the director asked me to read these lines from the script for um, Philia. Philia. It was one of the, it was one of the leads in the show, and I did these lines, and everybody, you know, just laughed hysterically. And I guess it was supposed to be funny. But I got a huge reaction and I they cast me in that role. So that was really the first big break, so to speak, that I got. And I was hooked from then on. I thought if you can, you know, say a line and get this kind of a reaction, what could be better? Yeah. Yeah. So. It, it, it's like a drug, right? You know, it's like, yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. You you attended Hope College for two years, but then decided to audition for the American Conservatory Theater in California, going from Michigan to San Fran. Uh, could you pinpoint things you learned at each school, per se, that made you the actress you are today? Well, when I was at Hope College, as a actually got to play some roles that normally I probably wouldn't have gotten to play at any other university because they were they were leading roles but um damn i was good so <laughs> <laughs> i bet i bet so i so i got these leading roles and um and the teachers that i had at hope college were fantastic i mean i learned i i took a directing course i you know i i made costumes i learned how to sew um and then i had i had other acting classes and that's why i left because after two years at Hope College, I had pretty much taken every theater course I possibly could. And it was time that I was going to have to start taking all my recommended, you know, like English and, and math and history and, you know, you know the boring stuff. <laughs> so to me anyway. So that's why I auditioned for American because because I knew I wanted to act. So, yeah. Uh oh, I can't hear you, Alan. Can you hear me? Hmm. Uh oh. Don't go nowhere. Can oh, you there. hear me? I hear you now. Okay. Yeah. Um the um you ended up in Chicago. What made you choose Chicago over New York City or LA? Jeez, where are my fingers going? <laughs> <laughs> um because I wanted, I wasn't ready to live in a big city. You know, I, I just, I wanted to be a big fish in a small pond, you know? So I went to Chicago and it was, that was wonderful and frustrating because the, the professional theaters in Chicago were, were mostly cast casting out of New York. So, you know, the Chicago actors would get really upset about the, the, the main cast casting directors from big professional theaters were casting actors from New York. But I did, I did a lot of theater in, in Chicago and I got my feet wet and I got all my union cards in Chicago. 
So um, when I when I got cast in, you know, to do a small role on um, uh, One, Life. One Life to Live, I, uh, I was ready. You know, I had my union cards. I'd, I'd worked. I, I knew what I was doing and I wasn't I wasn't lost in all of that. So I was ready. <laughs> To play a terrorist named Bonnie. To play a terrorist, yeah. <laughs> it was like a Patty Hearst ripoff. <laughs> well, I mean, what was it like stepping foot on that stage in front of cameras for the first time? Terrifying, because I really hadn't done any camera training. My training was all uh, in on stage. And so everything was very big. And you know, they, <laughs> they would keep saying to me, you know, the, the microphones are right here. You, you know, they're they're right here. You don't have to yell. You don't. I mean, Paul Rausch constantly was saying to me, "What are you yelling at?" <laughs> because I always talk so loud. It was my theater training. <laughs> That's so it was funny. terrifying, but it was wonderful. We had I I worked with you know the best actors um, on One Life to Live, uh, so that was. Oh, well, actually, that was first. And then, of course, I had my four years on The Doctors, too. And right. that's where that's where I really got to uh, stretch my wings was on that show. Do you, uh, on The Doctors, is there someone you think you learned the most from working opposite? Um, yeah, uh, Elizabeth Hubbard. With, uh, Hubbard. She yeah she was on the show for for a while while I while I was there until she she went to as the world turns, um, or or maybe she left before the show went off the air I can't remember the progression, um, but yeah I learned a lot I I learned a lot from just watching her and a wonderful older actress by the name of Meg Mundy, she was fantastic, um, beautiful beautiful you know one of those silver haired kind of like Constance Tower on General Hospital. Mm -hmm. Isn't that yeah. her name, Constance Tower? Yeah. yeah, she, you know, same kind of, from the cut from the same cloth, you know, the very beautiful older woman, you know, prim and proper and with a really wicked sense of humor. And on The Doctors, uh, there was a mystery man that I think you were supposed to have a love scene with, right? <laughs> you mean my <laughs> husband? Yes. <laughs> I love that. Tell us about well, that. They brought they brought AC onto the show because I was like nine months pregnant and still working. And they were worried that I was going to give birth on the on the stage floor because I was such a workaholic. You know, I insisted on working for as long as I could. And so they hired AC to play this mystery man. It was I was I was supposed to it was supposed to be Alec Baldwin's kid. And so they brought AC on to, to play a long lost lover that I, that actually I had conceived this child with so that he could, AC could be on set with me in case my water broke and I needed to get to the hospital. <laughs> it never happened, but, but at least he was there. <laughs> and that's when, that. that's when AC and Alec and, and I really, we really bonded as a, as a trio. And then eventually Alec and AC became roommates together in Los Angeles. Oh, that's so funny because I remember mm -hmm. talking to Hillary Bailey, and I think she and Alex, if I have that, were right. roommates. Yes, right. Alex lived with everybody. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. And then back to one life to live. Back to one life to live. Yeah. Intense. Yeah, that was supposed to be a three-year contract, and they they were so intrigued by the story. I always say this; it's probably not true, but. I think the reason they let me go after six months was because they played, they they wrote a, a six a three year storyline into into six months. It was it, such an intriguing storyline that I think they just they they wrote it too fast and and the story was basically um, dead ended in six months, which was which was fine because I never would have uh, I never would have had my life on. Guiding light had that not happened. Well, it must have left a, a a bad taste so early on in your career. It did. I swore I was never going to do another soap. I was like, yeah. "That's fine. That's that's a sign that I that I should move back out to Los Angeles and, and give LA another shot." And that was that was what that was what I was going to do until my agents called and gave me the character description for this character named Reva, 
which I was like, Riva, you know, and so I read the character description and, and thought that, I mean, this is this, I, I can't not audition for this. So I told AC, I'm going to audition for a soap role back in, in New York. And we had Rachel by then. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I had Rachel on, on the doctors. So, you know, I got cast on Guiding Light and, and I took Rachel and called my mom and she met me in New York and, <laughs> oh no, oh no, and, I lost you. And mom okay. was excited. Ma my mom? Right, because your mom grew oh, up. Oh, yeah. Before. She was a big fan. She was a huge fan of Guiding Light, yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, do you remember calling mom after getting the part? Like, was she... Over the moon. Well, I called her, of course, when I got all my other soap parts too, and all she ever said was, "When are you going to get on Guiding Light?" <laughs> or as the world turns, either one of those shows is my show. So <laughs> I don't care which one, but you will have arrived when you do Guiding Light or as the world turns. So it was, it was kismet that you know that it, it all happened. So it, she it was really, very excited. It really was. You turned down the part first, though. What was it about the breakdown? Uh, that Pam Long wrote that made you say to AC, this is a dream role. I did not. Oh, you. Oh, I never turned down the role. Oh, I thought you did. I thought I uh, read something that you had turned it down when it first came up or something. No, maybe I had turned, maybe I turned on the audition. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, no, I never. You said I don't yeah. want to do the soap, but then you read the breakdown. Yes, exactly. Because I watched, it it, yeah, I watched it in an interview. Talk about meeting Gail and Pam and, and reading opposite Betty Ray for this. Oh, um, well, I was not Pam Long's first choice for for Reba. Um, I had to. Uh, I had to. Uh, well, I didn't have to. Betty and Gail pretty much convinced Pam that I was the right person for the role, I guess, because Pam stuck pretty hard with who she wanted to play the role. Um, and then I think uh, she just realized she didn't have a choice. She was stuck with me. <laughs> <laughs> Pam, are you watching? That That's how all it went down, us. right? <laughs> Best thing that um, happened to her and all of us. So. Exactly. I mean, we were, we were, you know, we were like this. We, the two of us just, uh, I think we had, we had one big fight in all the years that, uh, that we we worked together as head writer and actress and and it was a silly stupid thing and and it was over as fast as it started but uh, poor joe wilmore who was our executive producer at the time it it he was with us and and he 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 went outside and nearly lost his cookies god bless <laughs> you joe <laughs> uh poor joe that, that... yeah and, and you screen tested with Two of your three Lewis men. Yeah. What what do you remember about you know Jordan and Robert from that day? Well, I Robert was was kind of um, uh, uh, stuck up. You know, Robert was being the was being the you know the leading man and and just you know. But Jordan Jordan was Jordan was so much fun. And he did, he did things in my audition to try to throw me off. And I stayed right with him. And, and of course, Robert, I, I fell in love with immediately. I mean, it just, just to, to look into his eyes and, and play a scene with him was hard not to love him. But he was a little, a little you know, a little standoffish. Um, I don't know if he, there was someone else in, you know, that he read with that day that that he liked more. He says he didn't. He says you, the minute you walked in the room, I knew you had the role. Um, so, you know, he was, he was, he was being a little, uh, a little short with not short, but just, he was being cool. But, well, but I mean, the powers of be, just, the powers of be certainly saw magic because, mm -hmm. you know, you, you had magic with both of those men and, you know, to have Robert at your side, you know, basically from that moment on, what was Definitely. that like? Uh, well, you know, I always kid around and say working with Robert was even if we'd been apart for a while, was like putting on an old stinky shoe that you should throw away. 
but you just can't because it's so damn comfortable. Well, that's what it was like working with Robert. He's my old stinky shoe. Um, yeah. It's it's like um, uh, it, it was the easiest thing in the world. And that never changed. You know, we trusted each other. We, we could, I mean, the storylines that we did, we had to trust each other. Um, you know, there was, we were thrown into some really ridiculous scenarios and, uh, and it worked for us. We, we challenged each other artistically and professionally. Um, and that's not to say that we didn't have our, our arguments because we did, but it, it was always over by the time we went to the, the floor to, to, to work, to, to do the work. Um, he usually apologized to me. <laughs> because of course it was never my fault <laughs> never <laughs> never how, how much of kim zimmer is a part of reva shane would you say and how much of reva shane is a part of kim zimmer hmm. uh well while i was doing the show uh kim uh, reva shane was a lot of kim zimmer because i worked five i mean it was five days a week you know, 340 days out of the year. I mean, it was all consuming. Um, I, I have to say I was, I was pretty good at being able to leave it all at the studio. And the minute I walked in the door at my house, I was, I was mother and wife again. Um, but then at six o'clock going in the, hopping in the car and driving through the Lincoln tunnel, I was putting Reva back on again. Um, so there was a lot of, of Reva and Kim Zimmer. Um, as far as Kim Zimmer and Reva, there always has to be a little bit of, of you mm -hmm. in a character because that's, a, that's where you draw from. Um, I, always, I always said uh, I wasn't married to every male member of one family. <laughs> <laughs> I, never, I never had that opportunity. <laughs> Thank God. Including the daddy. <laughs> <laughs> seriously seriously um you mentioned joe wilmore paul roush ellen wheeler you worked with gal kobe who did you have the best relationship with and who did you really feel understood the show best um wow they oh i had michael labson too and um i joe think Fowler, were you that with Jill I Farrow. didn't work with. I had a little bit of Jill, but but not much. I understand she was very good, but I didn't really. I didn't get to work with her very much. Um, who else? I'm trying to think. I, there was one other. That person. was when you were in the Florida Keys. <laughs> no, I don't think Jill was the exec then. Was she? Well, oh, you mean when the character was yeah, lost. when the character was off. Exactly, yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Before I washed Reba up was on in the, the shores, keys. yeah. Before yeah. I washed up on the shores of San Cristobal. Yeah, Robert, uh, Robert Calhoun. Tony just said one of our fans just said right, right. Robert Calhoun was you, great. Who did I you have the best? You, who did I what? Have the best relationship with, and who do you think understood the show best? Oh gosh, that's. You know, they all understood it on a level. I mean, we had, for a while, we had so many executive producers and head writers coming in so fast and furious that it was really the directors that you, our core of directors, that were really the ones that knew the show the best, you know? And um, when you had a problem with a script, doing something that was uncharacteristic of your of your character, it was really your director that, that would... would that helped me through it. John, we had John Weitzel. John was a wonderful director on the show who, who helped me a lot. Um, uh, but Paul Rausch was, Rausch knew soap operas. I don't, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if I would say that he had, he knew our show the best, um, but he knew soap operas. He knew what sold and, and what worked and what didn't work. And, um, I mean, he was tough, but he was, he was, he was good. And then we had people like Jill Laurie Hurst too, mm -hmm. who, um, who kept things on track uh, uh, continuity wise. And, you know, we had a great group of sub producers, you know, that, that were 
wonderfully talented and smart and um and outlasted a lot of EP so they knew the show exactly like Bobby <laughs> Kochman Robert yeah. Kochman was a was an assistant I don't, I don't can't remember a, a producer I guess yeah um, he was a producer and he sure. really he he knew the show too so you know all right it's it's time to talk about Reva's men first thing that pops into your to your head Chris Bernau. Rachel, I mean, Max, Max, the, the, my best Chris Bruno story was catching Chris Bruno, who complained about the fact that I was bringing Max to the studio and having a babysitter come in to watch Max. I caught him in the, Max had woken up from a nap. Trudy, my, my sitter, yeah. was not in the room and Bruno went in and I walked into the dressing room and Chris Bruno had Max up and he was patting his back and rubbing, rubbing his back and I caught him. And, I, and he was like, well, he was crying. You know, what was I supposed to do? So that was very, I will never forget that. So that's what pops into my mind immediately. I, I love that. Larry, <laughs> Larry Gates. Larry Gates, the, the best actor I've ever worked with. Seriously, he, he I mean, I, I guess because he enjoyed the work so much. It was, it was, um, it was, so natural to him and i learned i learned a lot about that to, to have fun i mean i think anybody would say the same thing about larry gates is the guy knew how to enjoy the work it was never the most important thing in the world if you didn't have fun doing it get out you know one of our fans wrote earlier that i, I think larry was on tcm today there was a tcm movie airing with larry today yeah was it um i don't oh, i don't know a lot yeah. yeah well when sydney partier died i i saw clips of him. yeah larry because that's the yeah. that's a really famous scene yeah i couldn't believe it i i had not seen it um jordan clark jordan was jordan was a miracle jordan would come in not having even read his script he was like Justin Dees, same thing. The two of them would pick up the script in the morning in the rehearsal room. And by the time the cameras rolled, they knew, they didn't not only know their lines, they knew everybody else's lines. They, they had, well, Jordan, I know, had a, a photographic memory. He could tell you, you know, your line is on the next page at the top of the page or it's three lines down. He, he was a machine that way. But <sighs> Jordan, Jordan, could drive an actor. He drove Larkin Malloy, God bless Larkin Malloy's soul. He drove Larkin Malloy crazy because Jordan used to pull, you know, stuff on Larkin just to try to get Larkin to loosen up. He was, Jordan was another one that liked to have fun. And when you got Larry Gates and Jordan Clark together in a room, uh, you know, you never knew what to expect from the two of them. When, whenever we would do scenes together, me, Robert, Jordan, and Larry Gates, there was a lot of leg crossing and pants peeing because we would laugh so hard. <laughs> so funny. You spoke about Robert. Anything to add to Larkin? Because you just mentioned. Larkin was the most romantic leading man I've ever worked with. He, we had some, we, we really had some romantic storylines and, um, uh, and he just rose to the occasion. I mean, he was, he was Prince Charming, you know, that's, that's how I always thought of Larkin as, as Prince Charming, because he was, he was so proper and, and handsome and yeah. And people loved Kyle. I mean, I remember Kyle and Reba. Yeah. Were, yeah. yeah. Really, it really worked. And Justin. Justin was, you know, <laughs> Justin was Justin. I mean, Justin, he, uh, you, you, whatever you got was what you had to deal with. You know, there was no, there was no fooling around with Justin. I mean, Justin, you know, he, he threw it out there and either you played or you, or you went home, you know, it, it, mm -hmm. he, he would get what he needed out of a scene and either you went along for the ride or you were left in his dust. He was uh, a freak of nature, Justin. He was, uh, 
I, I adore that man. Adore. I adore that man. <laughs> and Ron Raines. Oh, God, Ron. Mr. Ron Raines. Mr. Ron Raines. We sure. all referred to him as Mr. <laughs> Ron Raines. Yes. He, uh, he was, uh, uh, believe it or not, he was one of the funnier men on, on, on set. He had, he had a remarkable sense of humor. Um, the first thing that really pops into my mind, and if, I, if Ron Raines were listening, I said to him, Hades, he would start cracking up. Because we <laughs> we had those scenes in uh, we were shooting on location we were in these little pools on these rocks and it was unseasonably cold and they wanted us to be in the water and then swim towards each other and kiss and it was so cold that we were both <laughs> we were trying to make our way to each other's <laughs> lips but we were both shivering so much. And at one point we, we got out, we laid on the rocks because they were warm. And he said, these are hot as Hades or something. I can't even remember what the story was, but Hades became the word to represent that, that period of our story. Yeah, that period of time. <laughs> uh, Ron is in the Gilded Age on HBO right now. I know. I saw him. Oh, you did? I, I, have I to saw check the first that. episode. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and lastly, and, and certainly not last, but Bradley Cole. Oh, Bradley, another your, another prince your, charming. Your prince. <laughs> yes, he he was a real prince. Um, he was he was very serious. You know, Bradley was a was a was a was serious about his craft, um, serious about his his work, and there wasn't when you when you could crack up Bradley Cole, that was a that you achieved stardom because. Bradley didn't didn't laugh easily, but when he did, it was it was the most freeing. He had this he had a fabulous sense of humor um, when when he exposed it. But of course, Bradley was what I love Bradley for was he 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 opened up my my life to rock and roll doing those benefits for the, the Red Cross and everything. We just we got to do some fun stuff, Bradley and I, um, and everybody else. We all got to uh, uh, explore our, our our rock goddess, you know, genes yeah. in, in us. So the, the, those was, were those were certainly fun fun events. Yes. Um, over the years, Reva's had some adversaries, some female adversaries. Tell me what first comes to mind, uh, Michelle Forbes. Oh, Michelle was, Michelle was a real, um, uh, oh, now what's the word I'm looking for? Um, when you, when you are all consumed with the character, um, oh, I can't think of the word. Anyway, it's something I'm not. She dove in. She was a, she absorbed yes. the character sort of, of Sonny and Solita. Yes. Yeah. And that split personality uh, just about drove her crazy. But um, she uh, she's a wonderful actress. And now when, and when I see her occasionally on other things, I always stop and watch because I'm fascinated by her. She's beautiful and, and such a good actress. And I was sorry to see her leave the show because uh, um, she, I loved watching her. I loved playing with her. Cynthia Watros. Cynthia, I'm watching her. I mean, I'm I'm a huge fan of General Hospital. I, I watch the show every day. Um, I love that. It, it, yeah, or I watch it on on. I have it on my my you know DVR. I I record it every day. Um, oops, sorry. Am I making people sick? <laughs> and now I, I lost so. you. Oh, there we go. I'm here. Um, okay. Uh, she she was. She was another one who who came in at at um, six o'clock in the morning, ready to rock and roll. I mean, she was a consummate actress. She and she talk about diving into the craziness of a character. She she went for it a hundred percent, which is what's been so fun watching her dealing with this. You know, now I'm going to talk fan. And now I'm going to be a fan watching <laughs> General Hospital and seeing seeing the work she's doing on. I mean, it used to be, it, first it was Laura that I watched, and then it was Maura West, who I was totally intrigued with. And then it was Emmy Ryland. 
and and now it's Cynthia. I have so much fun watching watching the the challenges that Cynthia is going through on that show. Um, they've really put her through the ringer there too. So I I can sympathize with what she's going through as a character. I I, I love that the fans are going to love, love hearing, hate The fans are going to love hearing that you're watching. Um, oh yeah, well, I mean I'm a huge fan. Laura Wright. Laura, Laura was my sister. I mean, she she really was my sister. Um, Roxy, Roxy, I was going to say Roxy Farrell. Christy Farrell was my sister too. But <clears throat> Laura, when they cast Laura as my long lost sister, it was it was perfect casting, and um, we had we had great times together as. Reva and and Cassie on on Guiding Light, lots lots of stuff that I'll I'll never forget. And you know, you know we still talk, we're supposed to be pitching the ball with her and and West, uh, at some point. If you're watching, you know, set up the pickleball. <laughs> yep, I, I heard. And keep Cynthia, up the good work on General Hospital. Cynthia told me they were all playing pickleball. Yeah. Yeah. And Laura reminded me that scene where you first find out uh, that Cassie's your sister, you're in the hotel room, I brought champagne. I totally had forgotten. She reminded me. She actually says she might still have the cork to that. I brought Oh my God. That. Yeah, she she remembered that. I didn't really. <laughs> I, I remembered I it. I remembered watching you two because you blew me out of the water. It yeah. was like a huge reveal. It, you know, the cameo necklace thing. Yes. Yeah. You I know. remember the cameo. I don't remember. I brought the champagne. No, Is I brought champagne. My... No, oh. I brought for you two because I oh, knew what you guys. You did? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't remember either. So don't worry. <laughs> oh, jeez. Wow. <laughs> um, Thanks, Crystal Alan. <laughs> You're welcome. Crystal Chappelle. Oh, I, uh, Crystal was, uh, talk about f uh, funny. I mean, because the stuff that we had to do, um, you know, I, I, the thing I've always said was that that time travel story, Robert and I traveled through Crystal Chappelle's boobs because it was always, we always had to reach through the painting, you know, right across Crystal's breasts, um, that portrait of, of, of her. Um, we, had, we had a lot of laughs because the stuff we had to do was pretty outrageous together as well. I mean, I had we I had a lot of that with Cynthia too, but um, Crystal Crystal had been around a, a little bit longer than Cynthia, so she she understood the humor behind a, a lot of this stuff as well. Mm. So we had a, we laughs. Um, La I, you know, I've been so fortunate. Laughter's good. Yes. Laughter's good. Um, I I've been so fortunate that that I've I I, I can't think of. Seriously, a, a single clunker actor, somebody that I was like, thank God I never have to work with them again. I, I really would be hard pressed to find anyone in in my entire career of daytime that that I ever thought I will never work with that person again. I hope I never see them again. I've been so, I've been so lucky. And you, and you've really made magic with everybody you've worked with. I mean, that's yeah, why today the fans are here. You know, I, I want to take some time to get to some questions from them. You know, I want to thank them for donating to St. Jude, totally. for supporting you, for supporting Guiding Light. Um, Sam, one of uh, Sam is a fan of the show of you. I met Sam when we were both fans. Oh, coming wow. <laughs> He's from New Jersey coming and he wants to know when you're getting back on stage. Oh boy. Well, I did do a film. I did a movie that um, uh, called, uh, uh, no, I can't think of the name of it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's my daughter-in-law's film company. Um, I'll post about it. Let me know the release oh, and all that information. Okay, so you can look forward to that. But as far as stage, you know, it's still, it's still, um, you know, I'm, I'm busy. <laughs> I'm busy being a grandma uh, right now. I'm not quite ready to yeah, give that up. I don't blame you. 
I don't blame you. Well, Sundria, your fan was also, when are we going to get to see you do a cabaret? <laughs> you know? Oh, she, she's been on well, me about this. I said it to you. What, Laura, 25 years? I said it to you and Laura Bell when you were here together. We need to get you two. Right. Yeah. She's too good for me. Oh, you would have fun. <laughs> you would have fun. It would be, we would have fun. It would really be so much fun. Um, let me, right. I'm going to but, start reading so we can, but really okay. there's so many birthday wishes coming in. Michael said, St. Jude is awesome. And I have a little buddy fighting severe epilepsy that I've been, that I've been Spider-Man oh. for six years, knocking off bucket list wishes and memories. Love to you, Kim. Oh, God bless you. Um, Kim turned shit into gold for years, somebody says. Um, you know, I used to say I make shit smell like roses. Yeah, you know, I was gonna ask you when you sorry. I, I know your difficulty with PPAC. And yes. you know, I, I think you've said you had wished the show would have ended before PPAC. Looking back now, do you still feel the same? Do you still think it would have been better? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I sometimes in retrospect we have different that's totally my opinion. Yeah. That has it has nothing to do with anything else. I mean, the way the there were a lot of people, a lot of people behind the scenes who benefited and, and got a lot of experience um working like that. Right. Um and for them. I, I'm glad they had that opportunity for me. I, I, I to this day, I still just, there's, mm -hmm. there's very few, um, few, few memories of that time that I can say, oh man, that was fantastic. Um, maybe, maybe one or two. <laughs> no, that makes sense. Uh, Freeman was asking, I, I, I don't think you worked with, but Lisa Brown, the late Lisa Brown, you didn't I get knew to Le I knew Lisa. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I never got to work with her, and I just that that really hit me up alongside the head. I that sh that shocked me. Um, I had I had no idea. I don't know if she. I really still don't know if she. It was something she'd been battling for a while, and it just finally caught up, or if it was sudden, or whatever it was. It 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 that that really hit me hard. That threw me for a loop. Lisa is, is one of those people that you never expected to ever die. You know, yeah. she was just such a ball of energy and um, powerhouse. Yeah. yeah. Powerhouse. powerhouse. Um, they just announced uh, your man Robert's first air date, I think is February 9th. Really? Yeah. I'm Are so you excited. excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. I guess there is some character that there have been people that have said, you should go back and, and Melody Thomas Scott's sister or something. You, you need to go, you need to be on Young and Restless so that you and Robert can work together again. Actually, I was trying to get Robert to move into um, Jake's, uh, he was looking for a place to live out here. So <clears throat> my son Jake has a, has a fantastic guest house in the back of his property, so... Um, I was trying to get them hooked up, but now that Jake and Vera are having a baby, uh, Vera has family coming in from Amsterdam. So ah. I think the place is going to be a little overrun with relatives for a while. The Dutch are coming. The Dutch are coming. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, I love that. Um, would you want to do another soap? Um. Yeah, like on, uh, I mean, Robert's, D I mean, I'm sure it'll turn into something more. You know, he's, I guess he's there for a year. I should, I don't know if I should be even saying that, but however long he's there. For, if I knew that it was a limited um, kind right. of thing, then I could, I could plan my life around six months, you know, or, or a year. I don't know if I'd ever want to sign a long-term contract with the soap again, unless it was, you know, in, on the East coast, you know, then that would be different, but they're all out here now. They're all, I mean, I'm You're in LA. Right. That's why I'm saying it, out here. It, um, it, it's a, it's a bummer. Yeah. 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 It's too bad for <laughs> I, the New York actors too. I, I, uh, and I can't think of Bill Bumiller's character, but somebody said, uh, cause I didn't. Hunky Mark, Island but, guy. We used to call him. I, Hunky yes. Island Hunky Island guy. guy. But uh, somebody mentioned Noah, Mark Dobies. Yes, Mark, and, and fabulous Kane. kisser. 
Kane. And who? Uh, Kane. I don't oh, remember Kane. the actor's name. Kane. Yeah. Oh, he oh. passed away too a long time oh, ago. Oh, he did. I, yeah. I, I visualize him. That yeah. Was big, jumped, big right? guy. Is that after you jumped? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was with the with the Kyle Sampson storyline and everything. That was kind of the yeah. beginning of that. Yeah. With, and, and working with Jay Fletcher. Jay Hammer. Love Jay Hammer. Another, you know. I mean, well, that I story. Said, yeah. That story. Oh, Woman on the Ledge. Yeah. Yeah. When uh, I was a candy well, striker just in the me, hospital. <laughs> I just got chills of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Amy Evans says happy birthday. She's a big Reva and Josh oh, fan. Thank you. Oh, Amy. Um, yeah, I see. I see her posts all the time. Yeah, Thank Amy, you, yep, Amy. She posts. Yep, I'm looking. Everybody's saying happy birthday. Thanks for spending your birthday with us. <laughs> Jill said. Um, was there anybody you didn't get the chance that you really wanted to? Work with? Work with yeah. Or more with? Or work more with? I would like to have had more of a, a storyline with Beverly McKenzie, obviously. Mm -hmm. I mean, you think everybody wanted to work with Beverly. <laughs> um, that would have been know. some, think of that. Yeah. That, yeah. you know, would have been um, something. I don't know, because because Reva was the way she was. I was, I, again, I was fortunate enough to get to have uh, uh, the opportunity to work with just about everyone i mean uh, bill rourke i didn't get to work with a lot but, you know um vanessa's father um yeah. i would like to have worked with him i would love to have worked more with chris Bruno. you know i had i he was he was gone way too early you know um talk about a challenging actor i mean he he was he was an iceberg and uh and that that was fun to try to crack you know crack the pieces off that iceberg I just found a, 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 a comment, Bruce Barry. Alan, please tell Kim hi, and I still love her, even though she tried to in intimidate me, but couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> tell, tell you know, I, you know, I also watched the director's thing. That oh, you did? You did? Yeah. yeah, that was fantastic. It was so, I mean, Bruce Barry, I mean, I, how I can mean, you not love that guy? Yeah. Yeah, Bruce, Bruce directed my audition. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's amazing. That's a, I mean, Bruce is a class in and of itself, like yes. what he can educate. Um, yeah. Well, it, that was it, like you, when you were talking that day and somebody was trying to come up with the fact that they're, oh, the female that was on the show who yeah. I never worked Sonia. with. Sonia. Saying that she hadn't, didn't thought of one, but we had several female directors. Yeah. You know, right. um, Joanne, Joanne and Irene yeah. Pace and, and Susan Strickler and, um yeah we had we had we had a, a myriad of of female directors but bruce yeah. bruce bruce is the king ah, you're we, the king we, bruce. We, we got a birthday <laughs> greeting happy birthday kim hello from tulsa oklahoma oh <laughs> wow. i love that do you know that i've never been to tulsa wow i mean my character has but i've never been there i, I will be there someday <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Wow, wow, wow. So 41 years with AC. What makes this work? Oh, I used to all I used to always say that it was um uh our sense of humor that he always he always makes me laugh. And after 41 years, there's probably two good belly laughs in the course of a day every single day he makes me laugh i mean he pisses me off too but but the thing the things i remember most are the are the are the uh, the the moments he makes me laugh and laughter's the best medicine right i i really didn't know it until this you know my this relationship and it yeah. truly truly is the yeah. best yeah when, and when now of course the addition of the of the grandkids and watching him with the grandkids is because they all adore him. I mean, it's just, it's frustrating because it's always, you know, they're all, even if I FaceTime with them, they're always like, where ba, where ba, they call him ba. I'm Yaya, he's ba, where ba, 
where Ba at? And I'm like, I'm here. <laughs> How come you're Yaya? Because isn't that more Greek? Yeah, it was supposed to be Jojo. That was because my middle name is Joe. Yeah, yeah. And that was what I wanted it to be, Jojo. And Vincent couldn't say Jojo and it became Yaya. So, I mean, that was, that was how, and then I, you know, only to find out that Yaya was grandma in Greek, in Greek. So, and I think here with Jake and Vera, I'll be Oma because that's. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah. Oma and Opa. Yes, yeah. for sure. Yep. Oh, I, I love that. That, that warms me because of my parents. Um, yeah. Another Alan was asking, was there, and I think I, I know this answer there. Was there ever a time at the Emmys when you thought you'd win, but didn't? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> really the only, the only year that I absolutely thought I was a shoe in was the clone story. <laughs> and I think it was more because I worked my ass off in that story and, and, and felt like I, I, with what I had, that it was a, that I'd done a really good job. And it was the year they decided to give it to Susan Lucci, which of course she deserved. But, you know, the other years that I won, they were total shocks to me. But the one year that I thought I had it in the bag was was the year that, that Susan won. And that was my my clone story. And I think I just, most the things that I submitted for that reel were, were clone stuff because I was so proud. I ended up so proud of that story. Um, for me, I hated it, but but for me and for the work, and not just me, but everybody else that had to deal with the clone, you know, it was it was a it was a tough story for everyone, and and you know, ooh, good. It was good story. It, yeah, top, good story. Before I let you go, I I realized Maeve Kincaid. I love. Oh my God, Vanessa and Riva, when she <laughs> ran you over with the car. Uh, <laughs> We did the uh, the most recent I've seen Maeve was probably um, six months ago. We did we did some interviews for they were doing they were uh, airing uh, old general or no old uh, general? the doctors the doctors yeah and what was Maeve doing there though? yeah I don't know I would assume oh, no, it, was it, the wasn't, it wasn't Maeve it wasn't Maeve I'm thinking of John Roland. Um, but I have seen, uh, when did I see May? Oh, anyway, I, I, I'm getting everybody mixed up now. <laughs> hey, it's my 67th birthday. What do you expect? <laughs> I, when I saw that today, I could not believe that at all. But let's look back before I let you go on this one. Oh. Can you <laughs> The best are the people in the background, Maria and Paul. <laughs> yeah. All the reactions. Tom, Tom Pelfrey stripping for your 50th birthday. Yeah. I mean, that was, uh, that that picture totally enca uh, encapsulates, is that a word? Uh, our relationship. Yeah. You couldn't, you couldn't have picked a better photograph to represent our relationship as mother and daughter. And mother, mother and son. <laughs> mother and son. <laughs> Um, Steven Bergman sent me that. I love that photo. Yeah. Thank you funny. for celebrating your birthday with all of us. Well, thank you, Alan. Once again, you're, you're a prince among men for, for, you know, giving all of us this opportunity to reconnect with fans and, and, you know, to tell our stories and, and have you anchor all of this. It's just, I'm, I'm so appreciative of your talent, Alan, as well. And thanks to the fans for just, you know, participating and, and following Alan's locker room. And uh, you guys, I love you all. And I hope that I can do something soon that you, you can all come and see. <laughs> <laughs> we, we would love that. You have a lovely birthday dinner with your family out there. Say hello to them for me. And I'll see okay. you when you're in New Jersey. I want to meet those grandkids sometime. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Love you all. I would love that. Bye, doll. Uh, thank you to my guest, Kim Zimmer, for celebrating her birthday with us today, and to all of you for helping to raise money for the St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Join us tomorrow when Kim's on-screen son, Brian Gaskill, joins me live. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so. Turn on the notifications so you don't miss a single episode.
and have a great night and I will see you tomorrow.